Hi, I'm Dave Balkin of Balkin Sewer and Water Main Service, and I'm here today with Ramsen, who's one of our most talented uh, field supervisors, and we're going to do a little tutorial, a training video on how to properly flare copper. So the first thing that uh, Ramsen's going to do, even if it looks like you have a clean end to the copper tubing, you have to cut it. That's a rigid uh, tubing cutter. Even if the uh, end of the copper looks like it's clean, any kind of a defect can result in a leak later down the road. That's why you always recut it. And like anything you do in plumbing, it's not about brute force, it's about finesse. Now what you're going to see is what Ramsey's doing now. Most tubing cutters have a tool on the back of them that you can clean the copper. It's going to take the ridge off the copper. If you leave that ridge on the copper and you flare the copper, again, you'll end up with a defect. So all these little things are nuanced that lets you, in the end, at the end of the day, have a flare that will last for decades, usually over 50 years. Another thing that people forget to do, believe it or not, is before you flare the copper, this is the flare nut, you have to put the flare nut over the copper tubing. Needless to say, if you flare it, the flare nut is not going to fit over the copper tubing afterwards. <laughs> so what Ramson's doing now, he's going to put a little pipe joint compound around the flaring tool itself that as you hammer it in, it doesn't get stuck. Here Rams and he's checking for ridges, it's all clear. He's gonna see how it fits on the other end of the flare fitting. Now, another thing to note, if you over flare the copper, you may think you're doing a better job, you're not. It will tend to split. You might not even see the split right away, but it will again cause a leak down the road. So sometimes less is more. What he's doing now is putting pipe joint compound around the threads of the flare fitting and the face of the flare fitting so the copper seats properly. Next, he's using pipe joint compound around the back of the flare so the flare nut will turn easily. Because most of the tightening, believe it or not, is done by hand. So he's lining things up properly, tightening it by hand. There you go. Right? Now, Graham, if you had to say, once you put the wrenches on it, how much of a turn do you need to stop it from leaking? A quarter of a turn. Maybe a quarter of a turn, a half a turn. Again, Ramsen did it, maybe over 70 years. <laughs>